Well, hello, my soul friends. It's Victoria on the Soul Nurturer channel, and uh, I'm excited to talk to you about the full moon in Scorpio. Uh, I don't have my moon in Scorpio, but I'm a sun Scorpio, so I'm very much an expert on this topic. <laughs> Lots of lived experience in the Scorpio areas. All right. Well, welcome. Welcome. If this is your first time coming by the Soul Nurture channel, I always have to do the little commercial up front, but mostly I just want to say, trust your instinct, pause, watch with me and see if what I share resonates with you. That simple. And then if you're curious, go watch some of my other videos. This, this channel really is still as we all are in its own transformational cycle, uh, really, because I'm going through a big transformational cycle and any given day, I'm doing something different. I'm continuing to evolve as we all are, um, but it's my honor to be a soul guide for you out there. I've been on a transformational spiritual journey, well, since I was a young, young one, but professionally for over 20 plus years. So I think we're going on 25 now. I don't even count anymore. It's been forever. <laughs> so welcome. And um, and to my regular viewers, thank you so much. I really appreciate all of you. I appreciate your emails. I appreciate your comments. I appreciate you showing up for me on the lives on Tuesday. And by the way, this full moon is taking place on Tuesday, which is the live. So if you're one of my viewers or one of my clients or somebody who I've looked at your chart. And if you want, if you're comfortable, um, I may select a few charts to just to peek at. I won't bring your chart up. I'll open it and then talk about what um, I feel may be happening for you. So, but make a note of that. Okay. Somewhere down the road, I, I, I want to do more live on the spot uh, readings like that. It's not my strength. My strength is one-on-one -on -one, tuning into my client. Um, but I'm practicing and I really encourage all of you. I get a lot of people who watch my channel who are, are also practitioners and I get a lot of messages from them. Thank you for your, uh, what do they say? Uh, I guess vulnerability and sharing the behind the scenes that, you know, I'm just learning and growing. We all are. In fact, I don't think we should ever claim we're an expert in anything because there's always more to learn, always more to grow, always more to evolve, especially during this season. We are in Taurus season um, and yeah, season of growing our soul potential, growing into um, the fruition of those desires of our soul. So happy birthday and soul return to my Taurus friends out there. I see you. I love you. I learn from you. You're my opposite sign <laughs> as a Scorpio. You have much to teach me about grounding. So I'm going to just pop in on my notes here. And I meant it, you know, really, is time weird for you or is it just me? I'm telling you, I'm like, every time I look up, I'm like three days behind where I think I am. But hey, I keep saying to all my clients, and I'm going to receive it for myself, pace with grace. There's a lot going on when we just moved out. Well, not out yet of the Jupiter Uranus conjunction, you know, very, um, well, it's been called uh, once in a lifetime because the way that it was configured will never happen again for, I don't know how many years, like eight, I don't know, 84 or something like that. So, um, but it is Jupiter and Uranus coming together. They conjunct every 14 years or so. So we'll have that experience again, but not quite as potent as it was and is because we're still kind of in that. And that's also flavoring this full moon. Mercury is going direct on the 24th. Yay. Well, I have to tell you, this Mercury retrograde really uh, played with me quite a bit. All the traditional ways, you know, losing uh, my car keys, losing my purse, um, gl weird glitching with my my computer. But remember, everything that happens when we, we talk about the symbolic... Um, language really astrology is a symbolic language a way that we sort of track correspondence with what's happening with the celestial movements and our human experience and it's all you know it's nothing written in stone i know like i try not to say this is exactly what's going to happen i say this is a possibility just like the weather it may rain it may be intense and <laughs> truth be told this full moon in scorpio may be intense. So let's talk about it. Okay. 
I do want to say about being in tour, tour season, um, I want to say this to all my Taurus friends, but remember, we all have every sign in our chart somewhere, right? It's the wholeness of us. So wherever Taurus is, whatever house it occupies, maybe you have planets in Taurus. But in general, I say this to my Taurus friends. And if you are one, you're a sun sign Taurus or moon Taurus or rising Taurus. I always say this and hopefully it helps you and let me know if it does. Stubbornness, we Unitorians are known for their stubbornness, which, you know, maybe not a fair thing to say, but I haven't had one Taurus say that's not true. <laughs> so, but tor stubbornness is the same energy as determination. The difference is stubbornness is hurting you and holding you back. Like, no, I'm not going to do that because you're, you know, stubborn. You're digging your heels in. You're not going to budge. Determination works for you, helps you move forward. So when you feel stubborn and you feel like you're shutting down and trying to prove a point, you have to ask yourself, am I hindering myself with this choice? Maybe I can just tether into some determination and move forward instead, right? Okay, just wanted to share that at the front here. So full moons, you know, they come two weeks after the new moon, the time when we set intention. And I love this reference that new moons are when we inhale, you know, we take in that breath of fresh inspiration. And then full moons are when we exhale. It's the culmination point. It's the pause and okay, where are we? How are we doing? And where are we with our soul desires and what's in the way of that? And this full moon in Scorpio, let me say a little bit about Scorpio. So we and I'll tell, I'll talk more about Taurus energy more when I do the new moon uh, in Taurus. Um, and I don't have that on the top of my head when that is. I, I, I It's coming up <laughs> in two weeks. <laughs> um, Scorpio, well, both Scorpio and Taurus are fixed signs and an opposition is what creates the full moon. The sun and Taurus opposite Scorpio moon, 180 degrees apart. So the sun's light is reflecting off of the, the moon. The moon doesn't um, have any light source of its own. And so just what that sounds like, right? It illuminates, you know, so just as that symbolic experience happening, how do we take it in our world and what's the message or the symbology of it? What will be illuminated in our lives in what way on what issues? So then we look at, well, what is Scorpio about? And both Taurus and Scorpio, the axis of Taurus and Scorpio, both fixed signs, earth and water, are both connected to our resources. Um, Taurus is about our resources, our needs, our, our worth, um, our, our, our money, um, and eight, eighth, ho or, well, eighth house is Scorpio is connected to the eighth house, is about shared resources. Um, our sexuality, our passions, our deep um, soul longings. And these two are, you know, 180 degrees apart, but we find, uh, this is the way that I work with oppositions. It's like, as a hypnotherapist, I work with parts. What are these two various parts seemingly very different? First, what do they have in common? Well, actually, first, what do they both need? What is the need they're trying to get met, Right. Taurus, practical security, Scorpio, intense merged connection and um, depth and um, passion. <laughs> so, and what do they have in common? And that's where we integrate the opposites, right? It's where we integrate. Speaking of integrating, I said that funny, integrating. <laughs> oh, think, thinking. Speaking of, let me slow down. When I sit down to do these videos, I do a little meditation before and I just get this like, I mean, like lines of information that want to just put through and I have to just slow down. That's why I'm doing the longer video today on Zoom, which compromises the quality of the, the camera because my computer has a less quality camera than my phone does, but I have more space to speak. And I always say this, the longer videos, because I'm going to talk until I feel like we're complete with what I want to share with you that I think may be helpful for you. If the video is too long for you, you know, 
do it in increments, do five minutes, 10 minutes, or just trust your intuition and scoot forward. And my husband always laughs when I say scoot, scoot forward <laughs> a little bit into the video, just randomly and see what I'm talking about. See where that meets you. Okay. Or pour yourself a cup of tea or beverage of choice, light a candle and sit with me for a few minutes because this is for you. This is for you. Okay. So this, um, this full moon also could correlate with, you know, the new moon in Scorpio that happened last November, the 13th, I think somewhere around there, was it right? But anyway, that's, you know, these lunation cycles go like that new moon to full moon, two week um, cycle, or this longer cycle, right? That what you set, you know, six months ago, where are you with that? How are you doing with that? Well, this full moon, you know, I want to say this, <laughs> I thought, I need to start this. I do this with my clients with issues that are going on or where they're needing to grow. I will do a, um, like, let's check in and get a real check, right? So say they're working with self-worth on a scale of one to 10, 10 being really, really high, one, not, not so much. Where are you with your self-worth? Which actually, this is a good question to ask you out there because Taurus is about our self-worth, how we value ourselves, how we're valued and what we value, right? But I thought with this full moon, I'm instead of telling you, I mean, I kind of want you to feel into it as we're, we're getting closer. We're, we're a few days out. What are you noticing? So I wanted to do an intensity scale on a one to 10. How intense is this uh, rising full moon? It's still a waxing. It's waxing towards full. What are you noticing? Of course, we're in a lot of transformational water. So that Jupiter Uranus conjunction still happening. These wake ups and, and profound ways to receive bigger growth opportunities, bigger blessings. So intensity scale, I would say, I would say one to 10. There's a lot going on with this full moon. Scorpio is intense in itself, but we also have a square, uh, from Pluto, which sets up a T-square. So squares are more intense energy, hard energy, but taking action energy. Um, we see what's not working and we feel like I got to do something now. And also we have uh, Venus conjunct Chiron, Mars conjunct Neptune. So I would say the intensity scale, hmm, I'm going to say nine. Mm-hmm. And I love that it's a nine because maybe we're going to be completing some things that we've been so frustrated about, so irritated. Remember, I keep saying frustration, frustration. <laughs> I'm having a hard time talking today. Okay. Woo. So excited to share all this with you. Frustration and irritation are growing pains. Anybody having growing pains out there? Like you're just so frustrated with the stuckness, right? You're so irritated by the limitations, right? Okay, Jupiter and Uranus really is trying to help us shift out of that to, you know, really break through. Well, moon in Scorpio, full moon, it's about rebirth. Um, Scorpio is connected to two planets. The ancient ruler is Mars. We probably have a sense of what Mars is about, right? Taking action, fighting. Um, it's how we move our energy. And modern day Pluto, which is all about deep dives, deep transformation, like to the core, right? Those deep dives into shadow material. So this is, you know, there's some intensity here. There's some work to do. There's a lot of transformational work to do. So this is where I want to encourage you straight away to notice where you're in resistance, where you're in that locked down stubbornness and you know something needs to change, but either you're stuck in a comfort zone or you're stuck in fear or you're just being stubborn. So <laughs> is your stubbornness or your resistance helping you? And if it's not, and you know, I think that in the core, like the Scorpio knowing goes deep and it's instinctual. And it's a time for you to really trust your instincts and know that you will be empowered to do whatever you need to do to make the changes that transform your life. Um, so yeah, 
And then, oh, also, what's the transformational possibility scale? This is a 10. This is an absolute 10. I'm having a weird eye twitch today. And I was thinking, I had this a couple months ago. And I was like, I, I got to go look at my journal to see what was going on. Because I'm thinking, is this my intensity monitor, um, you know, measuring? Like my, my eye starts to twitch a little bit. I don't know if you can see it, but it's kind of bugging me a little bit. So intensity scale at a nine, trans transformational possibility scale, 10. 10, 10, 10. Let's do this, in other words, right? So where is the sun? and op opposite moon, where is this full moon happening in your chart? You want to look at your chart where four degrees is a um, Scorpio and then Taurus, which would be right across from it. And I don't practice whole signs. Some people do that to, to illustrate, um, to make it easier to follow the transits. For me, it's less accurate, but that's just my preference. Um, so if I have done your chart before, um, I'm really okay with this. If you're a client and I've done your chart before, send me an email. I'll quickly look at your chart and tell you what house this is going to happen for you. If I have time, I think I will, though, if you get it to me soon. And um, for those of you who watch live, be prepared. You can message me in advance if you want me to look at your chart live on Tuesday at 444 p.m. Pacific time. Okay. Hi. Hi. Take a breath here. So yeah, we've got a lot going on. This is a deeper dive. We're going to be going in to bring up what's been suppressed, what we've denied. This is like shadow work, but also the things we have been afraid to really bring to light. It's been hidden. Maybe it's connected to shame or fear. Like if I speak my truth now, what what's going to happen to my world, to my relationship? And yet it's rebirthing time it's pushing put you do you feel the pressure do you feel the pressure of like you gotta you gotta let go and do something different you've got to um take action on behalf of your soul potential so a lot going on here and i just i did make some notes and i want to talk about them one by one as quickly as i can <laughs> so you know this may bring up a lot of things that may be because we still have the Jupiter Uranus conjunction surprising to you, um, or maybe your truth is surprising to others, but wherever you're denying yourself and you've suppressed, you're afraid to tell your truth. I encourage you to find a safe person, you know, to, to share, whether it's someone like me, a therapist or a really trusted friend who knows how to put things in the vault, who will take it to their grave but you need to externalize it. You need to bring that up because it's living in you and it's hindering you. I know I'm talking to somebody. And if you're comfortable, comment. You know, there's a saying in 12 step that you're, just, you're as sick as your secrets. And we see this in family dynamics, like where there are a lot of secrets, there's a lot of dysfunction, right? And if we have a lot of secrets in ourselves, we, we are out of integrity with our soul potential. We're out. <clears throat> out of integrity. Oh, maybe I'm out of integrity. A little throat <laughs> jam. Okay. So it's about getting an integrity, sharing what is you know, the worst thing possible that you have held against yourself because we could be our own Scorpio energy can be our own worst persecutors. And I'm okay. I'm sorry. I'm just listening. Cause I'm getting like this little message, like it, you know, you're not guilty. You're not, you haven't done anything wrong. You've just been learning and growing. And so it's like this reclaiming your soul innocence. That makes me want to cry. The innocence of your being. It's in this human experience that we get contorted and learn out of coping mechanisms to manipulate our external environment to try to get our needs met and it doesn't feel good or we deny our needs and we shut them down because we don't think we're worthy of our needs this is a time for us to reclaim we are worthy to find our truth to speak our truth to reignite the passion of our purpose these are all the things that are happening right now again rebirthing cycle um, so if you don't have a safe person or you don't trust enough, and this is, can be a scorpionic thing, you know, the energy of Scorpio is who can I trust? Who do I trust? And do you trust yourself is key. So then journal. And if you don't trust your journal, I know I get this a lot from my clients about 
I don't want a journal because I'm afraid someone will read my journal. Listen, I've had that experience. Not going to name names. Although at some point I'm going to name names. You know, Anne Lamont has this great quote and it's something like, if people didn't want you to uh, say, if people wanted you to write nicely about you, about them, they should have treated you better. Something like that. I love that because I know a lot of people like myself, people who like to write, we have these places where we hold back because we don't want to hurt anybody. And yet those people have hurt us. So that makes no sense. Again, I know I'm speaking to somebody out there. <laughs> anyway, back to point. Um, if you can't find a safe person, become your safe person. Tell your journal, or if you don't trust writing all that out in your journal, just get a pad of paper and just, or as much paper as you need and just get it all out, get it all out. This is a time to get the gunk out to the deep core of your being, that dark recesses of your being, the shadowy stuff, just get it out, write it. Um, <clears throat> and, you know, all the painful stuff, all the, all the shame, all the fear, and then burn that paper or um, shred it. Shredding is modern day way of just releasing, shred it. Okay, because more that you release that, the more you can reclaim your own soul wisdom and your clarity. You know, there's a lot of chaos in the world. Notice the chaos in yourself. Scorpio moon can be storming. It can storm a lot. Scorpio energy. Now, the symbol for Scorpio is the scorpion, but the stinger, right? So I find this with Scorpios, especially Scorpio moons, when there's so much intensity and so much energy and pressure that they're either going to sting others a bit, a lot with their words, with their spicy, ouchy words. <laughs> this is a spicy moon, by the way, very passionate. Um, or they're going to turn that tail, that stinger inward. I happen to be one of those Scorpios. I might be upset by somebody, but I turn it on myself. I'm just being real here. And then that creates a lot of pain in me. And I'm getting an illuminated thought about that because I do deal with um, experienced chronic pain. So I'm thinking, ooh, that stinger just keeps stinging me. And maybe that's connected to my chronic pain, the chronic pain. Okay, moving on. So another dynamic that may come up with this axis are power struggles, power struggles in relationships over things maybe you've just kept saying, I'm, I'm going to let it go. Or I'm not going to talk about it. Or you were afraid to talk about it. And you kept pushing it down, pushing it down. So I feel like this big energy coming up. I kept feeling like a volcano, like just, you know, big energy coming up. So stay in contact with yourself. Journal. If you catch yourself first before all of this comes up, you're going to be able to navigate it and communicate it in a way where you're heard, seen, and valued um, because you've listened to yourself. You've seen where you're at and you're valuing your truth. Always you first, right? So these power struggles can emerge over money, you know, money, there are shared resources and the other way we merge, which is our sexuality. So we may be having talks about what our preferences are, you know, what's going on, or maybe there's been a problem there and you're, you're wanting to ignite the passion there. I did want to touch base with some of my, um, trauma survivors out there there because this is a time where some trauma can surface you know and so be very you know again set up your support team and you're the first one in your support team so you're going to catch yourself you're going to notice you're going to be so tuned in how am I feeling well I'm really very emotional this it's kind of stormy and what's going on what is what's what am I telling myself what am I feeling what are the thoughts what are the memories surfacing so again, reach for support um, where needed. I highly recommend any therapist who is trained, fully trained in somatic experiencing. I hear a lot of people say they're trauma-informed and I, what trauma-informed, anybody can watch a YouTube channel and be trauma-informed. You want someone who's been fully trained. And if you are still in a place where you're not trusting other people and you're, you're trying to support yourself, I would recommend somebody I like on YouTube is Irene Lyons. Um, she is a somatic um, processing therapist and um, she offers some, a lot, a lot of videos about somatic experiencing and other supportive ways to be with yourself, to befriend yourself and to be with the experience of trauma as it rises. 
so that you can meet yourself in a way that you needed to be met. Okay. All right. And this kept coming and I was like, what? Are, okay. So what happens? I'll just let you behind the curtains here. When I am ready, preparing, readying my heart and soul to talk about the lonation cycle, I sit with, I look at the chart and then I feel into it and then I get words and images. Okay. So this word came primal scream. Now, some of you may not know primal scream was a therapy that was very popular. I want to say in the eighties. And this is where, you know, intense emotions were encouraged to be released through screaming through, you know, just getting it out. And this is very beneficial, you know, and where I live, you know, I can go out in the woods, <laughs> hopefully there's no one around, but usually not. And then I can just let it go. You can just really get it out. Or I've been so blessed to be in whaling ceremonies and sweat lodges where you get to the bottom, you just keep dropping down and just letting it all go. So there may be a need for that to, you know, in a safe and healthy way to whatever primal scream looks like for you to get it out, to purge all that old stuff. And I've been saying this for a while now, we need to purge not only our physical environments, but our interior world purge to emerge more of your potential and possibilities and your power. So embracing our inner darkness, of course, this brings up shadow work. Um, and I, I love working with shadow work and it's become quite popular now. And again, there are lots of videos out there. Mostly you're, you're embracing all of you, all of you and quick little way to know your shadow is we're projecting all the time what you're triggered by in other people and what you admire in other people that's your that's you being reflected back to you parts of you you've denied um that need to be integrated and embraced for your wholeness okay and then the other image that came to me and i'm going to wrap up pretty soon so please comment with any questions i'm going to do a shorter version of uh, this lunation cycle like, oh, gosh when probably tomorrow because i don't have time today and it's like i try to do a six minutes or less um i call it a few minutes or a few moments with the moon and your soul and that's just top of the trees just like the essence of the full moon for those who don't have a lot of time to sit and watch a video again if you don't have enough time to learn about something that's going to help you unfold your potential then you might be booking yourself too tight i don't know Okay. <laughs> but again, I may not be your cup of tea. This is just my intuitive take. There's lots of really amazing astrologers out there. Find someone who speaks to you. Um, and hopefully I do. Okay. So this image kept coming. I remember, you know, um, hearing about this and then researching it. There are some, some plants that, um, or seeds that can't grow unless they are there's a fire to release the potential in the seed and they're fire activated seeds. It's so there are some plants like um, the lodgepole pine and I think eucalyptus and there's a, and the seed or the fruit, there's a resin that seals it and it won't crack. It can't be cracked open unless there is a fire. The intensity of the fire melts the outer coating and allows the seed to grow so that came to me and i was like hmm yeah there's some spiritual alchemy happening here for sure with this full moon like the intensity is transmuting some things cracking open our potential so that we can grow more powerfully in new powerful ways all the stuff that we've denied coming forward to support us in the even though it may feel overwhelming like oh you know i i I've got Pluto transiting my first house right now a lot. I have a daily visitor from my shadow, a daily, if not one, many more. <laughs> and I'm constantly having to take my own advice and say, okay, how can I embrace this part of me? How can I integrate it? That's how we do shadow work. So, so mostly just remember your emotions, emotions, emotion, energy and motion needs to be expressed. If you've been one of those lockdown people People who have moon, moon and Scorpio and Scorpios in general can be pretty secretive. And this is kind of the energy of the moon right now coming up. It's not going to help you. You must express, express, release in whatever way feels safe and appropriate for you. But 
you've got to do this to get out of your own way, to clear the way forward so that the full moon can illuminate something new for you beyond this, right? Okay, I think that's all I wanted to say. Um, I'm going to pop over to the chart and just run through what um, where the planets are for you, okay? And I'm so conditioned now to going live and I'm like, anybody have a question? Well, if you have a question, please do put it in the comments and subscribe if you haven't got had to do another commercial. Just had to. Okay, so we know that we are in Taurus season. And where is my... So on this uh, full moon, again, I mentioned the sun is at uh, in Taurus at four degrees and 17 minutes. Um, the moon is also at four degrees, 17 minutes, because it's an exact opposition, which makes a full moon. Mercury, how we think, how we communicate is still in Aries. So again, this is a spicy time. So Mercury in Aries doesn't have a filter. Be mindful, be prepared. Um, I notice my conversations with my husband or my you know, my frustrations, because I have some places I have to break through too. You're not alone. Um, been a little spicier, you know, having to do a lot of cleanup with what I'm saying. Like, let me take that back. I, you know, and so apologize where you need to hold it. You know, here I'm telling you to express, but that's why tell it to your journal first, get it out, externalize it. If you have a really in, uh, important conversation to have with someone, write it out in a letter first. And then read the letter. Number one, you'll get everything you want to say out. Number two, you'll do it in a way that your wounds don't come forward and lead the conversation. We also have Venus conjunct Chiron. So wounds around relationships are going to be kind of uh, illuminated too. And so when we're wounded and we're communicating from our wounds, that's where we're not going to get very far. We're just um, going to create you know, the person's going to get defensive, maybe you're going, to, you're going to trigger their wounds. So know that your wounds related to relationships, intimate friendships, uh, family relationships, that's going to get stirred up a bit too. What is need of he needed? What is needing healing? <laughs> I think Mars is conjunct Neptune, which is our energy. And this is why I'm tripping over my words, I think. Um, I want to say things quickly, Mars, but Neptune's a little fuzzy and a little confused, so not clear. There's some confusion here in this mix, by the way. So again, I'm going to stay with writing it out. Get your clarity on paper, read it to the person, or just maybe you just the sake of writing it is going to help you get clear on what action you need to take and what you need to do on behalf of your, your soul potential. Venus is also an Aries. So it's, yeah, you're fighting for what you deserve, what you need and where you're not valued in relationships. So I think that's all I have. Um, I hope that something in this from my heart to yours speaks to you and is going to help you where you are. Remember everything's purposeful. It's nothing to be afraid of. It's, it's like, okay, all right, full moon in Scorpio. What are, what are you here to help me with? We get to sort of borrow the energy. It ignites areas in our chart. It illuminates. And that's where more of the focus is. is this is where I need to do some rebirthing. This is where I need to pay attention. This is where I need to speak my truth. This is where I need to reclaim my power. That's key. All right. I hope this was helpful. Peace be with you during this time. Come watch me live. Come join me live. Email me if you um, if I've looked at your chart before. I'll tell you where this is happening in your chart and give you like a little blurb of what might what you might be experiencing. But remember, you're the navigator in your world, right? You're. I encourage you to trust your own instincts, your own intuition, your own knowing. Okay. I, I hear so many practitioners. I hear stories all the time. Of, oh, I went to this practitioner and they told me this is going to happen to me and that this is my past life. And then this is the, and no, just like with dream work, soul work, you are the expert. No one can tell you what your soul knows, but you, that's my opinion. Anyway, take it or leave it, check in with your soul and see if it resonates. Okay. Peace be with you until next time. Thanks for being with me. I appreciate you all.